Hy is die DA's een nieuwe woordvoerder oor politiesake en het beindruk met sy antwoord op die presidentse staatsrede verlede week. Andrew Whitfield sit hier oor kan my. Andrew, President Ramaphosa says he wants to halve violent crime in the next decade. How? Well, that's the part that was missing, uh, you know, with respect to the president. He made no tangible offer as to what plans he had to make uh, sure that he achieves that incredibly ambitious target. And in my reply to the president, I challenged him to unpack some of those plans and whether he actually had them. Uh, regrettably, in his reply to the debate, uh, the president still uh, didn't touch on, um, on the issues that people wanted to hear about how he's going to achieve that ambitious target within 10 years. So the farming community has been lobbying the president for a number of years to at least use the words that farm murders constitute a crisis. Why do you think the president finds it so hard to say, to admit, to, to claim that farm murders constitute a crisis? Well, the best person to answer that question is the president himself. Um, I, I can't uh, understand why. Uh, the DA has been driving the issue of rural safety and farm murders uh, for a very long time. Uh, and in fact, it's, it's very well laid out in our manifesto. Uh, and I unpacked elements of it now concerns about the violence that is committed in rural communities and in particular on farms. Um, farm workers, farm owners uh, have uh, been held hostage, they've been tortured. Uh, this is a, a major issue that the president needs to speak up on and we challenged him to do that. He failed to do it twice, once in the SONA uh, and then secondly in the reply to the, the debate on the SONA. Uh, the Minister of Police doesn't appear to think that rural safety is a priority uh, because otherwise we'd have a rural safety plan uh, that SAPS is implementing, which we don't. I mean, what, do you think this is politically motivated or just rank negligence? What could be the reason? I just think it's a, it's a clear and shameful uh, neglect of what the actual priorities in our society but are. But there's politics there, right? Especially around farm murders, because many, many groups in this country and many, many media wouldn't be seen dead uh, to actually say that farm murders is a problem. Well, farm murders is a problem. I mean, it, you know, 130 odd farm attacks in particular. And I think we must also contextualize that there are attacks without murders uh, and that people living in rural communities are extre extremely vulnerable. They live in the most isolated parts of our country. Uh, and it is just an obvious uh, thing that somebody should acknowledge, in particular the president of a country. Uh, the police commissioner in parliament over the last two days actually stressed the point that the focus that, th that SAPS will be applying is on uh, crimes that affect the economy. Now, if, if, if attacks on farmers and rural communities in traditional communities, subsistence farmers, doesn't impact on the rural economy, I don't know what does. Because some of the plans that the DA suggests are quite ambitious, retraining the police, making sure that the police force grows significantly in size. What can be done immediately which is actually realistic? Well, I don't think it's realistic, unrealistic to ask that police officers are trained to serve with professionalism and with pride. And, and that is one of the key elements of that component of our offer. But I mean, an immediate step that can be taken um, in Parliament actually is, and I made this point in my speech, is that we can appoint a, an unimpeach a, a head of IPED with unimpeachable integrity, I think the words that I used, a credible individual that can lead the uh, anti-corruption fight within the police. Because if we can't fix corruption in the police, we won't be able to corrupt, catch corrupt criminals and politicians who are involved in, in these crimes. Okay, let's talk about Parliament. So you are a, a member of the, uh, uh, of the Portfolio Committee on Police, where you nominated yourself to be chairperson in this week uh, in order to appoint Oppose Tina Jumat Peterson, who was now a duly elected chairperson. Is this the kind of committee that, you, in your in your view, uh, that is sensitive to to these issues and that might be responsive to uh, the DA's campaign and that might, might take a message to the police minister to say, let's do something about rural safety? No, so it goes without saying that I, I lost uh, that nomination and uh, it was effectively to protest our the, what we believe to be the questionable integrity of certain committee chairs and in this case, Miss Tina Jumat Peterson, who has a cloud hanging over her with respect to the sale of our strategic fuel reserves. Uh, but Parliament has an incredibly important role to play and this police committee has a very sensitive role to play in the politicization of crime. And we must be very careful not to do that. But at the same time, uh, in the annual performance plan of the police that has been tabled before us in committee this week, uh, rural safety is only mentioned once. 
and the indicator for assessing that particular uh, uh, area of performance is, is not even outcome based or impact based. It simply says that they must monitor the implementation of a strategic framework, but when we asked where is the plan, uh, it is still circulating amongst the provinces. So we, without a plan to deal with rural safety, and, and that committee in particular, I think needs to understand what their job is, and I will make sure that that is a priority for them. Okay, let's change gears to the province in which Tina Jumat peterson and yourself woke up on, on Sunday morning. Do you find the Sunday Times proclaim that if action is not taken, Cape Town will become the world's most dangerous city? We're showing the front page on the screen right now. Um, why is the Western Cape in this death spiral? So it's an issue that, uh, as you know, the former Premier Helen Ziller had, had been driving for some time, as well as now the incumbent Premier Alan Windy. Uh, and police ratios are a major issue in this country. And I want to just say that police resourcing across the country is a problem. We are 64,000 police officers short of the number required to meet the UN standard on policing ratios. In the Western Cape, the ratio is, is 509 officers to one citizen. Uh, that is an increase of over 150 in two years. So population increase in the Western Cape, but inadequate resourcing of policing in particular. Uh, and we believe that that, al along with the failure to implement a proper gang and anti-gang strategy uh, in dealing with gang violence on, on the Cape Flats and in certain communities, is a major component of this escalating crime wave in the Western Cape. Why are you looking only to national government to solve this? Is there nothing that uh, the provincial government can do? Sure. So the provincial government has rolled out a number of interventions. Uh, and in fact, I think now they have the biggest uh, provincial budget related to community safety. Uh, but the, 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 the mandate of provincial governments is limited in terms of how, how much they can become involved in policing. This is constitutional mandate. Constitutionally. Yeah. So constitutionally, uh, sections 205, 206 and, and one other section deal specifically with limitations uh, when it comes to provinces. And I think what we are dealing with in the Western Cape is uh, we have exhausted all avenues to, to, to do oversight over the South African Police Service. We are collaborating uh, with the city of Cape Town and various other uh, agencies such as the Metro Police to combat crime. But we are stretched uh, beyond our mandate. And it is now time for SAPS to step up and to make sure that we have adequate resourcing. In some police precincts, it's, it's one to 600 uh, citizens. So it's a problem. Thank you very much, Andrew. Dit is een halve van ons. Kalkel weer volgende woensdag 9 hier en vanochtend rechtstreekse aflevering van Verslag en Gesprek. Goeienacht.